you've made it to the final part of the series. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to start a chess game effectively. Now, chess is broken down into three phases, the opening, the middle game, and the end game. This video is specifically going to be taking a look at how to effectively play the opening phase of the game. And I'm going to have recommendations for you for the future of how to work on your middle game and end game and improve as a chess player overall. So as we discussed in the initial video, we take turns playing chess and white goes first. But there's a big gap between the opening, starting the game, and checkmate. So let's fill in some of these gaps. First and foremost, there's a very important concept in the beginning of the game that you need to understand, and it revolves around the four center squares. Now, my experience with learning the traditional way of chess, you teach someone all the moves, or the movements of the pieces, we should say. Sit down, you let them play white, let them play their first move, and the first thing that they do is, say, push a pawn up on the side of the board. Now, when I'm teaching openings, I don't necessarily just tell you the things to do. I want to show you the common mistakes that I see. Now, this move is typically played because the majority of people, I want to say roughly 90%, are right-handed. And just like when we're doing new things, I don't jump into the deep end of the pool when I'm learning how to swim. So people typically stay away from the middle. But that's exactly what you should be doing in the beginning of the game. This move, in fact, has absolutely no bearing on the game at all from what we'll see. And one of the first mistakes I see is excess pawn moves in the beginning of the game. Really, a good opening is not going to have many pawn moves at all, as we'll see. So when we're talking about the center, let's go ahead and start off with a move where we place a pawn in the center. And this was Bobby Fischer's favorite, and he even had a quote on it, best by test, 1e4. And let's say that Black, he's new to chess, He's not quite sure what's going on. He just makes a pawn move on the edge of the board. Does this affect the center? No. No, it doesn't. Well, now I'm going to bring my bishop out. And notice how my bishop attacks through the center, as well as this f7 square. Now, this is something very, very important in the opening phase of the game. Watching out and protecting your f2 and f7 squares. Now, why are these pawns important? In any fortress, and we can consider the initial position of chess a fortress, there's a weak point. And only the king defends these weak points. That means if I could take something and protect it, I could get checkmate quite quickly. And here's one of the fastest checkmates. So say black still just makes a pawn move the edge of the board. He's learning, he's new, I understand. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my queen out. Now notice how the queen and the bishop are attacking f7. Now, this is a big problem for black because he pushes his pawn one more time and now the queen captures here and this is checkmate. This is actually known as the scholar's checkmate because the bishop protects the queen, the queen attacks the king, and our three rules of check that we talked about before, can you capture? No, because you'd be moving into check because of the bishop. Can you block with a friendly piece? No, it's in your face, nothing can block. And can any of the pieces capture? They're all around, but they can do nothing about it. So this is checkmate. A game of chess can end and even less than this, though. Let's see the fastest way to lose a game of chess. Well, remember, we're supposed to be affecting the center. So white first starts off by somewhat affecting the center. The pawn's attacking the center. And then black moves the pawn up one. If he moves it up two, it could be free. I'm not too into that. And then white decides to play this move, g4. And all of a sudden, the game is over. This one's called Fool's Mate. You opened up your king to be attacked. There is nothing white can do. Game's over in two moves. Fastest way to lose a game of chess. So understandably, I'm showing you the 
uh-oh, the I should not do this. So multiple pawn moves like we see here can open up your king for attack. Pawns can't go backwards. They're the only piece that can't. So that's what gives us these problems. So what should we be doing? Let's get back to it. So if I put a pawn in the center, let's say we see a copycat move by black. E5. Okay, good. Pawns in the center. So I typically give my students three rules when they're playing for the first, say, time or for months in my chess classes. These three rules are maintain a pawn in the center, develop your knights and bishops effectively, and castle your king. So what do I mean by effectively? The knights and bishops need to either be attacking the center or attacking your opponent's pieces that are attacking the center. So let's see what I mean. I have the option to move this knight three different squares. But as we talked about, the center is important. But why is the center important? The center is important because it gives you the most options for the future for attack and defense. The knight is a great example here. We have three squares where we could move the knight. Now, which one is best? Knight on the edge of the board, does it affect the center? No, and in fact, putting a knight on the edge of the board limits its capabilities as a piece because a knight, when it's centralized, touches eight squares. You just lopped off four of his legs, and that's an unhappy octopus there. Well, what about our second option, knight here? It does affect a square in the center, but notice how it blocks in both the queen and bishop. That's not effective. I don't want to move the same piece over and over because it's going to waste time. I want to invite everybody to the party. I want everyone working. The best move is knight f3. Notice how the knight not only attacks the pawn, but also a square in the center. Now, that's an effectively placed piece. Knights typically don't go on the edge of the board in the beginning of the game because it makes them less effective pieces. They're not affecting the center. So my knight is attacking this pawn. So I'm going to bring this knight out to defend. Now notice what I said. You either want to develop your minor pieces to attack your opponent's pieces or attack the center. Well, this bishop has multiple options here. He can go here, which is fine. It develops, but it's not doing anything. It's passive. Very common mistake, though, as I see people will go here with the bishop. Well, you don't want to move the same pieces over and over in the opening because it's wasting time. Putting this bishop here, in fact, blocks this pawn, blocks this bishop from getting out. This bishop is going to need to move again, and we're wasting time. And it's all to defend this pawn where we could just simply move up this pawn and it could do the same job. So the two good squares for this bishop is either here, attacking through the center, or here, attacking your opponent's piece that is defending the center with the intent to potentially capture. Now, just for opening purposes, I'm going to go through and play a basic line to show you how everyone can get developed and what the end of the opening phase would look like. So. Say black is, is new to the game, and he's kind of concerned that you're going to capture his piece. And that is going to leave, say, this one weak at that point. Well, he pushes his pawn up, strengthens the center, and also it makes it where this bishop can potentially get out. All right, so now, if all of the action is happening in the center, I keep using this word, center, 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 and your king starts right behind the center, and we first started off by showing if you're not protecting the king, you can lose very quickly. You want to castle quickly in chess. You want to get out of the center. So in this case, castling is a special move in chess we haven't talked about yet in the series. Where our king, if nothing is between the king and rook, it's the only time you can move two pieces in chess at the same time. If neither the king nor the rook has moved, we can go one, two, 
and it puts the rook over. And this is a safety measure because we have a nice wall of pawns protecting our king as well as the knight. And we've gotten our king out of the center. So coming back to the three things we want to accomplish in an opening. Maintain a pawn in the center. Check. Develop our knights and bishops effectively. We're halfway there. These two guys need to be put to work. And castle our king. So now we'll see black move. Black moves his knight out. And we always have to ask, what is our opponent doing? His opponent hitting our pawn. Well, I'm going to bring my knight out to defend the pawn. He brings his bishop out to the only square it can. He's getting ready to castle. We have a bishop not doing anything, so we need to move a pawn to get the bishop out. This solidifies our center. Black does it as well. The 1-2, put the rook over for safety. I move my bishop out. Attacking his knight, which is attacking the center. He moves his bishop out. And this is a complete picture of what an opening should be. Pawn is in the center. Our knights and bishops are developed effectively. Our king is castled. And both sides have done it. Now, what are we looking not to do? Some openings in chess are playable. But let's say d5, for instance. This opening is actually called the center counter of Scandinavian, depending upon what part of the world you're from. But it brings the queen out early. We have an expression in chess, never bring out the queen early, and I think it's incomplete. It's if she can be attacked continually. So you're losing time by moving the same piece over and over. And this gets us to our three advantages in chess. Time, material, and quality. It's very easy to understand, as you've seen in the previous video with checkmates. Everyone learns the advantage of material first. If I have more guys than you have, typically I'm better. But they don't think about the other two advantages in chess. In this case, time. Time is not tangible time, like on a chess clock in seconds and minutes. Time is, if I move the same piece five times, but you're moving all of your pieces, you're developing, as we've seen in this good opening example, you could overwhelm your opponent by attacking. So in this case, I'm bringing my knight out, hitting the center, and let's say black's new to the game and he starts making some errors here. He moves the queen here with check, just because I see check, oh, I'm gonna check the king. Well, I'm simply going to develop my bishop and that's going to block the attack. So it's two pieces I've developed. Well, Black's still not satisfied here, so now he is going to move the queen again. Well, I'm going to bring my knight out. I am hitting these center squares. And already, it looks like white is somewhat cheating in this position because he already has finished development and Black still needs at least three moves. Now, as soon as you get finished with your development, that's when you're looking to attack your opponent and make things happen. And that's where I would strongly recommend going to leechess.org and looking up puzzles where you can set up themes from studying checkmates to studying forks, pins, skewers. Look these things up because it's going to help you to identify when your opponent hangs a piece, you can take it. But how can you induce those mistakes? This video is focused mostly on the opening, but those are middle game concepts that you should be familiar with. And end game concepts would be like our checkmates video, which we saw in the previous part. So coming back, I hit on two of the three advantages of chess. We've got time, material, and quality. Well, quality is very much the proper use of peace. And we've already seen one example after e4, e5. If white puts a knight on the edge of the board, this limits the quality of the piece. You want as many options as possible for your pieces, so developing towards the center gives them much, much higher quality. So lastly, let's look at a couple of different openings quickly that'll give you an idea that these overarching principles that I'm giving you 
to control the center by maintaining a pawn there, developing your knights and bishops effectively and castling, it's going to show up in almost every modern chess opening. So this one is called the Queen's Gambit. And what is a gambit? A gambit, by definition, is offering up material in order to gain time. Well, let's think about the rules I've given you so far. Many would say that this pawn can capture, and the pawn is free. Well, one of our opening principles was maintain a pawn in the center. Maintain, that means keep it there, right? So if you capture, did you maintain a pawn in the center? No, and what happens? White pushes this pawn up, and he has complete control of the center. I'm already getting something. And this is a playable opening for black, but it's much harder to play these types of lines. Well, why do I want to maintain a pawn in the center? Well, if I start trying to move my pieces out like I normally would, it looks like they're getting kicked around. And if you're getting kicked around, you're losing time. You don't want to move the same piece over and over. So it's important to maintain the center so pawns don't kick your pieces around. So coming back, how could I maintain a pawn in the center? That means if white is to capture, I need to be able to capture back with a pawn. And here we have this move. C6 is also works. But after this move E6, this is called the Queen's Gambit Declined. And I have a book on Chessable, the aggressive Queen's Gambit Decline on this specific opening, making the strong pawn chain. And now we're gonna see our opening principles again. We've maintained a pawn in the center. Now we wanna develop our knights and bishops effectively and get castled. My knight comes out hitting the center. Your knight comes out defending. My bishop comes out attacking your knight, which is affecting the center. Your, we'll say knight, comes out defending your knight. And some will go, well, isn't this pawn free? Black set a fly trap here. And this is where opening theory, the more you play, the more you play certain positions, you'll learn tricks and traps in them. So if I was to take here, go, oh no, I'm giving up my queen. In fact, black is the one in the driver's seat because the only way white can get out of check is to give back his own queen. And already, black is better because he is up a piece. When we look at the material count, we've got three minor pieces, white only has two. So coming back, that's not gonna be the way to do it. After bishop g5, we simply want to finish our development. I'm gonna bring my knight towards the center. Black's castling. I wanna do the same, I need to get my bishop out of the way. This is a more aggressive square than this one attacking towards the opponent's king. Now black has a bishop that's not doing anything, so let's push the pawn. And after castling, notice again, we've maintained a pawn in the center, we've developed our knights and bishops effectively, and we've castled our kings. So hopefully you're starting to understand too many pawn moves are bad. Moving the same piece over and over is bad. Putting pieces in front of other pieces can be awkward. How about another line? This is one of my students' favorites, typically. They like building houses. So I'm gonna bring my knight out, and we'll do the same. So I'm just going to build a house on both sides. We're just building a house. And we build a house not to go camping outside, but to live in it. And we're not directly affecting the center yet, but we will. This is the hypermodern style of chess, where we're just setting everything up before we do anything. We're, we're just gonna get developed, we're gonna get safe as quickly as possible, and then we're gonna fight you. Instead of the old school 1800s traditional style chess words, center, attack, and go after your opponent. You can just do this, your first few moves on either side of the board, and you're typically going to be completely safe. So we built the house to live in it, now we're ready to castle. And let's go back. We, we've castled. We've got half of the knight and bishop equation done. Now we want to put a pawn in the center. Okay, I'm going to push this pawn up, and I have a King's Indian structure. This is a King's Indian attack, a favorite of Bobby Fischer. 
after d5, knight bd2, Bobby Fischer being the only American world champion. c5, getting more control over the center. e4, we both have our pawns in the center now. And after knight c6, we have a king's Indian attack position where the only thing we have left to do is develop our bishops. And we'll keep going. I'll give you one more example here. And it can be a little bit offbeat, but it's pretty easy to remember. Let's say this is the Nimzo Larson opening, named after two different players. Well, when I bring my bishop out, I'm attacking this pawn. So black defends it, center, center. Push this pawn up, getting ready to build my house. But I have a good reason not to just put the bishop in the house. I am going to bring my bishop out attacking his knight. Again, a good minor piece is either attacking your opponent's piece or attacking the center. So I'm threatening to capture this knight and in turn win this pawn. So black defends the pawn. And now I need to finish my development. So I am going to push this pawn up, get my knight out. Both knights are working quite well. Say he gets his bishop out, I castle. And there we have another example of a good opening in chess because we've castled, we got our knights working, we got our bishops working, and soon we'll be able to push one of our two pawns up in order to get the full center action that we've been talking about. So hopefully this video has shown you not only what to do, but common mistakes and what not to do. And for future directions, I've got other playlists on our channel which talk about first experience at tournaments, what to expect, what you need to know, how to study tactics, where to go to study tactics, in-game study. But the thing that's going to help you more than anything else is playing and enjoying playing. So there's plenty of sites and in person. In fact, we have the Palm Beach Chess Club, and you can take a look on our website, palmbeachchess.com, to find out more about the Palm Beach Chess Club and local tournaments in our area. I sincerely appreciate you allowing me to be your guide on your journey of starting chess, and uh, hope to see you soon.